volumes. To view daily here on Sirius XM 106 volume. It's Eddie Trunk. Trunk Nation is the show live 2 to 4 p.m. Eastern time. Replay every night 9 to 11 p.m. Eastern on demand as well on the Sirius XM app. A little while ago, we talked to an emerging British rock band and uh, the singer in that band, Luke from the Struts, just a few minutes ago. And now we talk to one of the... Uh, the icons, one of the elder statesmen, <laughs> one of the uh, all-time greats. How dare you, how dare you, sir? The man who sets the bar for all these young pups. D.C., elder David State. Coverdale, it's been too long, my friend. Edward Von Trump, my God, you're cutting into valuable nap time. I've been singing for three and a half hours. Come what on, are you these singing? Elder statesmen need their rest. <laughs> what are you singing? I'm singing my heart out. What does it sound like? <laughs> <laughs> Are we no, getting no, some no, new white decided. snake? Are you working on some new stuff? Yeah, What's going new, on? Yeah, new white snake out. We got 18 new songs to uh, to choose from. Really, really good. First time I've written with uh, Count Rebel Beach. Uh, he of uh, the Bacon Monster. Uh, first time I've written with Joel Hoekstra, and first time I've written uh, with the pair of them. And we've come up with some fabulous new white snake anthems, guaranteed, guaranteed to get the stadiums a rocket. So, so how uh, how far in the process are you? You say you're you're at the point where you're singing, so you're you're tracking your vocals now. Is that where you're at? Tracking the tracking vocals, yeah. Uh, Rev's down in somewhere in the Caribbean. My co-producer, who should be here doing guitars, so I've had to jump forward into the seat and take control. He's down there sending us videos of babes in bikinis. You know, it's so winger of him, you know. But uh, it's good. It's getting me going. You know, uh, I'm really pleased. It's been an intense year, ridiculously intense year. You know, we decided um, to take like a year off and, and make an album. But in the course of that year, we've... Uh, cleaned up and uh, overdubbed uh, Derek Sherinian and uh, and Joel Hoekstra on an old album of mine, Never released in America, called Restless Heart, which is really giving it a, a whole new uh, uh, burst of oxygen. We put a huge copy table book together called the Purple Tour Book uh, with uh, photographs never seen before. It's like one of those big 300-page-plus things. 3D cover and all that stuff. It's very exciting. Uh, we re released Go Figure, the 87 album, the Super Deluxe 87 album, as it's the 30th anniversary. <laughs> it's, it's like top 10 and top 5 all over the world. It's fantastic. Crazy. Well, that's what I wanted. To, that's what I wanted. To, I mean, you got a lot going on here, and it's all good stuff. Oh, but that's oh, and The other thing is we've had to, we, uh, we were supposed to have a purple DVD from the Purple Tour. Um, right. Actually, we were supposed to have it at the end of last year, but I was so tired after two consecutive years. All my uh, touring and all my family were coming in, so I went, oh, fuck it, you know, another time. Uh, so we finished that off this year, sent it out to Warner Brothers, and then Japan and uh, Germany uh, red flagged it during uh, the, uh, the production process and stuff. We went, oh, 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 pull it back, pull it back, let's make sure everything's kosher. Uh, so that's now uh, not going to be available for your Christmas stocking, boys and girls, I'm sorry to say. But it will be available January the 19th, 2018. And well worth the wait, Edward. So when you say and red flag... Than having a, much, much, having, uh, much better than having a faulty disc under your tree. You know? <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean by <laughs> red flag? Why, why, did they, why, did they, why did they stop it or why was it delayed? Well, it's such high definition... Uh, I think one of the pe one of the companies went, oh, I can't be that thing, and pressed it in one way. I mean, it, the pre-orders are so fantastic, they started a second production. So we've had to cancel and, and, uh, and destroy a lot, of, a lot of product just for technical, technical issues, I believe the expression was. Wow. So, however, prior to that, I do believe uh, we're going to premiere on Christmas Day for those white snake rock and rollers who are just full of turkey and goodness and joy. And we're going to preview world premiere the burn video, which will be white snake as you've never seen them before. <laughs> I can't wait. It's so exciting. I'm getting fidgety in my pants. 
<laughs> you know, there's a lot of great stuff going on, but you mentioned the 87 record, which is which was yeah. uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to have you on, because it's been 30 years. Sure. I did get the deluxe edition. I did get the box set. I haven't had a chance to listen through everything on it, but I watched the DVD content. You know why? I looked- because there's like 10 years worth of stuff on there. Yeah, it's unbelievable. That's why and- I haven't been able to hear everything. We put it, Michael Mack and I, and uh, Hugh Gilmore, uh, Tyler Bourne's our head of uh, creative video. We just put, just loaded it up, you know, because that was one of the concerns we had. My God, did we put too much on it? But you can never have too much stuff on there for the fans. Can you, Edward? No, and it's great stuff. The booklet's great. The DVD, the 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 all the bonus content that's on there. How was it for you, David, revisiting the record? Uh, clearly, it's the biggest record of your career, certainly uh-huh. in America oh, and yeah. around the world. But it's also a record that was a tumultuous time in making it, and everybody knows the story <laughs> that the band that recorded it was let go. And so, for you, you ha- I imagine you went into it with some sort of mixed feelings. No, no, not at all. I was very excited to get rid of those tinkling 80s bells that were all over it. You know, that was, uh, took it out of that time frame. Uh, Michael McIntyre remixed the, uh, the four, um, Sill of the Night, Is This Love, Hero Go Again, and, uh, what's the other one? <laughs> Give me all your love tonight, I think. And we did 5.1 mixes on that for the video. Sad thing is the video at that time is stuck with its standard TV um, right. aspect. You know, we couldn't put the widescreen or anything in because everybody looked like uh, Tweedledum and Tweedledee. So we had to keep it standard and just remastered the, the thing to get the color more vivid, et cetera, you know, more clarity. But I was really happy to get rid of those. So, you know, I worked with Keith Olsen, a very successful American uh, uh, producer certainly knew his FM radio, and a lot of the things that we added to certain songs uh, were not the kind of things that I would normally have decorated my music with. But, you know, the success speaks for itself. But, however, that was one of the things I was looking forward to getting off some of the tinkly 80s keyboards, you know. But uh, the, the the really sweet thing for me um, I, there's an unboxing uh, video I put out on social media where I receive my box and open it up, uh, and and I share with people my favorite aspect of this. Of course, the music's fabulous. I love it, uh, and and it's been extraordinarily generous to my family and I. But the um, my favorite part is the evolutions, uh, which is predominantly John Sykes and I playing each other ideas of songs for the first time. Uh, and then we will, there was like countless versions of this. So um, a very talented uh, assistant producer, engineer we have at Hook City Studios, he said, oh, let me have a go at this. And he cherry picked uh, like six or seven uh, parts of the song as it developed or evolved. Um, into the pre-production, which, of course, uh, uh, proceeded going into Little Mountain Studios in Canada. And even then, the evolutions of the songs continued in the studio, you know, when we had Ainsley, Neil, John, and I. Um, so, you know, the really, until you actually finish off your mix, nothing's really f- finished, you know. But that's my favorite CD on there, the story behind the creation of... Uh, of a lot of songs that people know, you know, uh, is this love with a different chorus line, you know? Still of the night is I'm just learning, learning the, uh, just learning the song, just feeling it, having a lot of the music, but not the, the idea until John sat down and played it, you know? Yeah, I found right. that interesting and, in the, in, in the line. Well, in the liner notes, I found it interesting. You said that there was a part of Still of the Night that you had actually had knocking around on. I think it was that song that you say in the liner notes that you were you you actually had a guitar lick for Still of the Night for a long time that you were messing around with, and it was actually Sykes that heard it and said, "What what was that?" and and then went with it. Well, Is, you know, was I, I reading I, that right? Made, well, no, I had a I had a dorky riff. I had all of that stuff. Da 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 da. You know, and I just want to get close to you. But when I played my dorky riff, dang, ga, dang, ga, dang, ga, dang, ga, dang, whatever the hell it was, John just took it and fucking molded it and uh, and made it absolutely his own. 
and it, it's huge. But one of the amazing things on there is once once uh, we start getting uh, tracking, well, not tracking, but just pre-prod, uh, pre-production with Ainsley, you can hear there's an actual kind of guitar solo in the middle, chords going on behind, as opposed to the atmospherics we, we finally settled on at uh, Little Mountain Studios. You know, uh, yeah, that Sykes... Was, uh, that was a great, uh, my favorite collaboration, uh, That and Is This Love with John, without a doubt. Oh, and looking yeah. for love. I thought that was fabulous. You know, Sykes is a guy that uh, looms large in the 87 record in and, and, and so many ways, and uh, I thought you did a, a nice, you, you were very kind the way you addressed the situation with him. I mean, two two pages into the booklet, there's a standalone great shot of him playing. You you, you, you give him all, all due respect in it. Um, you know, I know the relationship is not good and hasn't been for, for very long. Did that make this kind of bittersweet for you in some ways? Did you wish that he would have been able no, to at least no. been involved? Did no. you reach out to him? Well, no, the, the only reach out was legal just to make sure he was aware and his people were aware of what we were doing. Um, I actually don't really need uh, permission from anybody to do what I do, which is rather nice. Um, but the circumstance is I just wanted out of respect for him to know this was the plan. You know, we've had several special um, deluxe editions before at certain anniversaries, but, but this, this is by far the most uh, uh, detailed and stuff from that time, um, including unseen footage from Rudy Sarzo's private videotapes and stuff. And we have a great, great guy you met uh, in Sao Paulo called Purple Snake. He just researches the web looking for people's clips from White Snake shows and puts them together in really creative ways. So... It's, uh, you know, all of these things uh, we just wanted to give to the fans. And that was when we were talking about doing the evolution thing. It was kind of overwhelming because there was so many times that John and I were changing this idea. Every day we were in uh, a villa I'd rented from a friend of mine in the south of France. And it was great. Once we broke bread and, and drank wine with the locals and were accepted, we had a super time there. But the, the, the main thing for me was that was prior to going to Los Angeles and prior to our relationship somewhat separating and disintegrating or whatever. So when I hear those things, I don't think of the animosity, the bitterness or the resentment. I just hear the joy that we, we were having putting this record together because I wanted the 87 album to be a step further than um, the blueprint we'd had with Slide It In. You know, to make White Snake from more of that traditional rhythm and blues aspect into a more flamboyant, intense, you know, with people like Cozy Powell, you know, uh, and John. These guys are intense musicians, and that fire gets me firing on all six, and, that, and that's what I need. I can't just do it without uh, that, that amazing musicianship uh, going on behind me. The same passion that I have. The the other the other thing that I found really interesting in looking through the packaging as well was that talking about the original band that recorded the record you you mentioned something there there's always been this cloud about why it actually was you changed the band and you mentioned something in the liner notes which I thought was interesting and maybe you could elaborate on where you say you were going well, maybe through you, maybe you can remind me. <laughs> well, well, you said you said you were going through vocal issues. You were having a lot of problems singing, oh, yeah. and during that time, while you were struggling, you found out who yeah. you, your real friends were. So I'm I'm imagining that that's sort of your way of saying that that you didn't feel good about what the other three guys were doing while you were having your issues. No, not that. It, it wasn't necessarily the other two guys, uh, the other uh, four guys. It was predominantly John and the producer at the time, a guy called Mike Stone. They kind of. I took over the project without my blessing while I was recovering uh, and removing the project all around the world uh, and just not involving me at all. So the situation was, you know, I spoke to my lawyers and I said, this is, I was just getting huge studio bills from places I'd never heard of. And it was like enough already, you know, but that was then. I don't, uh, I don't hold any animosity the thing that followed was extraordinarily beneficial to everyone who was involved with the record and played on it 
You mentioned Rudy Sarzo, watching some of those clips Rudy, of the yeah. live of, of the band that went out and played, of course, the, the tour, Adrian and, yes. and, and, and Tommy and uh, Vivian. <laughs> There's a couple clips in there oh, in those live clips. My goodness, did Rudy Sarzo have hair? He, I mean, you guys all had oh, impressive God. hair there in 87, but Rudy, oh, I, God, I couldn't even recognize it. him. I swear to God, we had to move around all the time to avoid being licked. It was absolutely <laughs> he is I swear to God, with all of these sexual harassment things going on, I don't know furniture's gonna be complaining about Sarzo. I know his I know his base tech is. <laughs> Oh, it's too much. Well, I'll tell you, I really enjoyed the packaging on this thing. It was great to see the record revisited. Did I also hear, because I didn't listen to the original record and the remaster yet, but did you change the sequence or do the UK sequence oh, or yeah. something? To, no, no, what was that I about? Just, I just sat there. I just sat, well, there was two. I Okay, so I put the running order together, as I usually do, sent that off to EMI. We were we had two, like, companies that they did. So actually, it's only this year I signed with Warners. It's the first time I've been worldwide on one label, you know, which is astonishing when you think about it. And I've always had great success with Warners, and it seems to be continuing now, although I'm hoping to host uh, my dear friend Serafino and Mario from Frontiers, uh, who have expressed interest in uh, actually the studio record. So they're going to come in, fly in from Italy and come up and see us, which is very exciting. Um, but uh, the, uh, where were we? Sorry, I got sad. The track, the, the sequencing. The sequencing. Oh, yeah. So I'd sent the original stuff, the UK one, to, uh, to, to EMI, and there wasn't a problem. I'd spent that Christmas... Uh, a, a very sad Christmas, actually, with my daughter. I'd been separated from her mom in Munich, and it was, and it was a kind of she was punishing me, I think, for quite understandably for deserting her. Uh, but it was very sad. And then on my flight back to Los Angeles, I got the flu, so I came into my suite at the Mondrian, and, and there was waiting this uh, production cassette, which had absolutely nothing to do with the running order I'd sent them. Uh, and like a fool, I put it on, put my headphones on. Instead of waiting till I felt better, you know, my ears are shot from a transatlantic flight. I put the production tape on, put the headphones on, heard crying in the rain and a few bits and pieces. And I thought, I'm done. I was like two and a half million, three million dollars in debt. I thought I was done. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Amazing stuff. stuff. And then, you know, a, a matter of weeks later, uh, we're shooting the videos, and then when the album comes out, you know, it just, as you know, and still, we were number three in the British top ten last week, behind the Foo Fighters, for God's sake, a 30-year-old album. Good God, man. You know, It's amazing. amazing. The, gift, the gift that keeps yeah. giving, David. <laughs> oh, God, you know, it's, well, it's when you work hard. It's John and I worked hard on songs. The guys worked, out, uh, worked hard on performing them. You know, it's very easy to forget the contribution of... Uh, I'll tell you what, here's an interesting fact, which was interesting to me. When we were mixing, I went, wow, uh, both Is This Love, uh, remixing, Is This Love, and here I go again. I'm going, what the hell is with the bass? There's something weird there. And I, I didn't realize that Olsen would replace Neil Murray's bass lines with a uh, fabulous keyboard player we were we'll using, which, who was actually Barbara Streisand's musical director, but great keyboard player, synth player. And he replaced, <laughs> and I didn't notice, uh, the bass for Is This Love, and um, here we go again, is a, a, like a move bass, go figure. Wow. So that was wow. an well, interesting let's... thing to discover after 30 years. Yeah. Hey, I'm but, out of but, time here, David. They're going to cut... Don't yeah, don't tell me. Neil. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're going to cut me off here if I don't end because I'm out of time. But I appreciate a few minutes. Everybody, check out the '87 White Snake reissue. The deluxe set is out now uh, via Rhino. Best of luck with the new stuff. Of course, as soon as it's ready, come sit in with us and come on the show anytime and say hello to the you guys. It, okay. Man. Absolutely. Look forward to it, Eddie. Always a always a pleasure. Happy holidays to you and yours. You too, David. Take care. Thank you. God bless. There he goes, everybody. David Coverdale.
We have to wrap it up. What a great show. What a great time talking to DC. And of course, earlier, thank you to Luke from the Struts for calling in as well. Thank you guys for listening, and I'll see you tomorrow once again from Los Angeles.